these are the citizenship act which is act number 88 of 1995 the immigration act which is act number 12 of 2002 and the refugee act which is act number 130 of 1998 all of which have been amended in fact the South African Citizenship Act is a relic of the colonial era and a replica of the 1949 Citizenship Act under the Union of South Africa. Now in practice, this piece of legislation are not in harmony with each other. Piecemeal amendments were made without any policy framework whatsoever if I'm not mistaken the immigration act has been amended five times already since it came into existence in 2004 and all those amendments were just piecemeal let me come to the issue of refugee protection the United Nations adopted the 1951 United Nations Refugee Convention and in 1967 the United Nations adopted protocol relating to the status of refugee. Meanwhile the Organization of African Unity today known as the AU endorsed its own 1969 OAU Convention governing the specific aspects of refugees problems in Africa in order to deal with peculiar circumstances of migration refugee in Africa. This was done in the spirit of Pan-Africanism. The 1961 Organization of African Unity Convention prohibits refusal of entry, expulsion or extradition of asylum seekers and refugees, and also provide for certain exclusions on certain grounds in fact, the refugee laws in most of the African Union countries, based on the 1961-69 rather OAU Convention, are more stringent than refugee, the Refugee Act in South Africa. Furthermore, the principle of Pan-Africanism does not promote illegal entry in the countries that are signatories to the 1969 OAU Convention asylum during the apartheid era. Asylum seekers and refugees were not recognized in South Africa until 1993. During the apartheid era, South Africa did not accede to any of the international or regional conventions relating to the status of refugees and asylum seekers. South Africa admit, administered its own refugee policy on an ad hoc basis, granting refugee status mostly to white nationals from Zimbabwe, Portugal, and Mozambique. The Aliens Control Act governed immigration during the apartheid era. The preferences of whites over non-whites, so-called non-whites or blacks, became the focus of the immigration policy. The Refugee Act was passed in 1998 in line with the 1951 Convention, the 1961-67 Protocol, and the 1969 OAU Convention. In other words, in line with all the other international conventions that exist in this field. Now, the Refugee Act in South Africa pro prohibits refusal of entry, expulsion of, or extradition of asylum seekers and refugees. Let me come to the accession of these international agreements. In 1996, two years after the first democratic elections, South Africa acceded to the various international conventions, the three that I've mentioned. But this was done without the government having developed a clear policy on migration 
including refugee protection. Now, the government did not make reservations and exceptions permitted in terms of international law. All these international conventions I've mentioned, they provide for countries to take exceptions and reservations on areas that will be difficult for their countries to carry. But unfortunately, we did not do so. Both the 1951 Convention and the 1967 Protocols provide for these reservations. In terms of Article 42 of the 1951 Convention, which we have attached to the White Paper, the, the Convention has got 46 articles. And in terms of Article 42, any state may make reservations to articles of the Convention other than Article 1, Article 3, Article 4, Article 16.1, Article 33, and Article 36 to, 40, to 46. Article 1 is about definition. Article 2 is about discrimination. Article 4 is about religion. Article 33 is about, uh, uh, excuse me, Article 16.1 is about access to the courts. And Article 33 is about refoulement, a French term meaning retaining a person from the country where they might have run away from persecution. And Article 36 to 46 inclusive are about administrative issues. Now, the United Nations was saying, on this mentioned articles, you can't make reservations, but on any of the 46 articles except this, a country can put reservations and exceptions and say, on this one, we are unable to. Article 7 of the 1967 protocol provides for any state to make reservations in respect of Articles 4 and 1, other than the, the articles that I've, I've read before, 1, 3, 4, 16, and 33. Many countries around the world make these reservations as provided for by both the Convention and the Protocol. South Africa, unfortunately, did not make any of these reservations as other countries did. And we believe, and we emphasize, it was a serious mistake on the part of government. It is not surprising that South, Africa courts, South African courts develop jurisprudence regarding asylum and refugees in the absence of these reservations and exemptions. And the, that, the jurisprudence that has been developed is always unfavorable to the interest of the state. Now, what is our policy framework recommendations when the state of affairs is like this? The White Paper proposes that the government of the Republic of South Africa must review and or withdraw from the 1951 Convention and the 1967 Protocol with a view to accede to them with reservations like other countries. And I don't want this fact to be mis misconstrued because people might get excited about it and I want to emphasize there is absolutely nothing wrong that the United Nations have done. The United Nations did nothing wrong. They did everything according to the book. But there is everything wrong that we as South Africa has done. And so this white paper proposal is not against the United Nations, but it's against uh, it's ourselves who must reset. We are saying as a country, we need to press a reset button. It is us, not the United Nations, who in 1996, when we interacted with the United Nations, committed these errors. And we are here today to accede to them and say we have started the process, or we are calling forth a process of correcting them. And we are putting this to the public out there. 
the refugee protection and immigration legislation must provide for reservations and exceptions contained in all these conventions. Particularly that South Africa, obviously everybody knows, does not necessarily have the resources to grant all the socio-economic rights that are envisaged in the convention. And even the richest countries in the world have posted their res reservations and exceptions. Let's come to the issue of citizenship. The genesis of the 1949 Citizenship Act and the present Citizenship Act, which we passed in 1995, one year after democracy. The current citizenship legislation, which we are using now to grant citizenship in South Africa, had its roots in the 1949 Citizenship Act and other relevant successive laws governing citizenship. 